Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Cage level Naruto and Tamari fall in love, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. Naruto just huffed and shook his head with a tired smile at his sensei's constant nonchalant behavior, even during times like this, you could count on him whipping out his book during some major battle. Naruto's bruised and battered body needed serious attending to, so for the safety of Naruto he needed to be carried. Naruto had his arms around his shoulders, while Kakashi held him up, Naruto closed his eyes to let the tiring sensation set in. Fighting pain really pushed his body to the limit, but thankfully the fox's regeneration abilities were kicking in, only to harm him in the end, spending more and more off his precious chakra. As his eyes closed, his other senses heard the murmuring of crowds ahead, naturally his mind never processed the thought that the crowds of villagers and shinobi were waiting for him, his thoughts ranged to the many possibilities that would cause the entire populace of Kanoha to wait outside the semi-protective tents and huts, set up for the now homeless villagers. But when Kakashi carries Naruto over a small hill, even though Kakashi already saw the masses earlier, it was still a sight to see. All Naruto could see over the lush plains was every single villager, cheering and shouting good praises were sent to him. Welcome back, we believed in you, you're a hero Naruto, welcome home, all these shouts of praises, burned into his memory, all the faces that once scored or ignored him, now filled with happiness and excitement at the thought of him returning safe and sound, children being taught to run away from him, they now cheered his return. They've all been waiting for your return Kakashi said, looking at Naruto's facial expressions with worry, Naruto was now facing his dream, most people don't know how to react, some react negatively, Kakashi's thoughts travel back to the first time he told him his goals. My dream Naruto paused with a look on his face that made Kakashi regret asking, is to be greater than the Hokage he shouted to the skies. I'll make everyone in the village acknowledge my existence. Naruto's look on his face showed disbelief, as if this was one big cruel joke, he couldn't believe that he could be loved by the people of his village, years of silent torment and disregard for his life, Kakashi let Naruto down while watching him closely. I told them everything said the smaller version of the Ba summons Kutsai, surprising Naruto that he didn't notice the small summons on his shoulder. Naruto Kakashi paused as he watched the crowds of Konoha run to their new hero. You've done good Kakashi said as he patted him on the back briefly, then moved to the side as countless shinobi and citizens surrounded him, hugging and patting him on the back, praising him, and all in a very passionate sense. Are you hurt? What was he like? Naruto was still hesitant to all the attention he was receiving, never before, ever did his actions receive credit, when he stopped Gara, who was there to thank him, when he returned Tsunade, nothing, when he fraud and struggled against the forces of Akatsuki, there was no recognition in his achievements, Naruto found himself at one point, doubting that his achievements will ever be heard, that all his efforts would be just pushed away into a category of the demon. But of course his failures, his mistakes, his undercomings, they were the news that always reached to the gossips of the village. When he failed in returning Sasuke, he could literally feel the hate being aimed at him, the name calling increased and somehow worsened, it was as if he pushed the Ichiha away, he was the scapegoat to the deaths during Kaiubi rampage, and now he was again being unrightfully blamed for the defection of the damn Ichiha. The time Asuma died, killed by Akatsuki member Haydn, Naruto never hated himself as much as he did then, he considered just ending it all, he wasn't a precious person, but he knew him and he knew this much, he had a fiancé, he had a child, he had a family, he was loved, and because of him, he died, a cold bloody death. They told him they didn't blame him, they told him it wasn't his fault, but Naruto could see in their eyes, the look of what if, what if Naruto didn't even exist, Kurenai wouldn't even look him in the eye, Ino still hasn't talked to him yet, no matter how hard he tried to amend things between them. Shikamaru was smart, he didn't blame it on him, Naruto could see it, he knew of the fox, he knew it wasn't his fault, whether it was his fault or not, it didn't stop the gossip, those hateful words spread around only tarnishing his reputation. But now, his dream, his dream of being loved by the people of his village, he was finally being acknowledged, he was now getting the recognition he finally earned for all the years, and yet it seemed foreign to him, the feeling of love surrounding him, the aura of caring was suffocating. He smiled a small smile. Setsu's Venus flytrap body slowly emerged from the large tree branch, the look of surprise on one face and anger on the other. I never thought pain could be defeated the white-headed side said. We better tell Toby, let's go the other side said as the body slowly increased itself and vanished inside the branches. Shikaku Nara watched with a small smile, seeing the Yuzumaki boy being praised and hugged, it wasn't hard to know that his life ambition was to be Hokage, and for the recognition of the village, he regularly shouted it across the village when he was younger. Thankfully he had matured faster than he had expected, Shikaku took this small time to see the differences in the young blonde. He was only 16 yet he saw that he was growing into his father's look, it didn't really take a genius to see who Naruto resembles, he was a close friend with Inoichi and his family, and they were well known for their unique hair color, blonde was very rare in these parts, and the Yamanaka clan were the only blondes in all of the land of fire. 
So Shikaku spoke this over with the third, and what do you know Nara intelligence brings him to A, how would you say troublesome S rank secret? He was getting very powerful if he defeated a man that not only the fifth and several Anbu platoons couldn't overcome, or even Jiraiya of the Sanin, he defeated the current Kazakiage when he was even younger, he has killed Akatsuki members, he truly was the strongest of his generation, maybe even more so than the former generations as well. He felt a spike of chakra behind him and saw a masked Anbu appear. What is it he said in an annoyed tone. Emergency meeting he said quickly, while Shikaku groaned inwardly. You're to report to the council room immediately he spoke quickly and firmly. Shikaku sighed, already he said not really prepared, mentally or emotionally, he hasn't even seen his wife yet, he would be worried for his son, but he was a trained and talented shinobi he would be fine. No matter how long it took for him, the thought of Naruto's progress remained with him throughout the day and through the council meeting. She used Katsayu to protect the village Sakura said, pausing, trying her best to hold in the pent-up feelings. And she's been unconscious ever since she said with worry. I don't know when she will wake up Sakura finished off, staring at her sensei with emotion. Tsunade Naruto said, looking at her with concern. Sakura looked up at Naruto, already he could see that he was blaming himself for Tsunade's condition, Sakura needed to talk to him about this soon. The council meeting was just as boring as he suspected, the room was entirely empty apart from the large stone table, and the five large chairs on both sides, and the large wooden chair with the Fire Lord symbol on it. On one side were the five Fire Lord advisors and consultants, in front of them were several papers presented earlier on the damages and costs of the attack. On the other side were the representations of Konoha, the conservative advisors Kahari Yudatane and Hamura Medikado, the two former teammates of Hiruzen Saratobi, Shikaku the commander, and Danzo the head of the Foundation Root Corps, an Anbu captain only known to everyone in the room, except for Danzo as Yamato. At the head of the table was the fire daimyo, he was a man around his late forties, he had an aged and pampered look about his face, his suit was full of ceremonial instruments, and his skin was pale and sagging, his face was covered with exotic makeup, and his scent was strong with expensive perfumes, he was a man that was hard to respect for a ninja, who was forced to embrace a spartan-like living. As Shikaku noticed the tension in the room rise, he brought himself out of his musings to properly listen to the conversation. We plan to continue working with the other countries against the threat posed by Akatsuki Hamura stated to the Fire Lord consultant. The Fire Lord advisor spoke up, they were all dressed in the same black uniform with a top hat and fire insignia, but all of them looked very different to the other. The young man with glasses spoke with concern, after what happened to the village he paused looking around at the daimyo, the land of fire will put every effort into getting it rebuilt. But first we'll have to come up with a budget he said carrying off while looking at the papers below him, looking at the prices and such and consider the strain on the other countries he said with a sigh seeing the workload ahead of him. Anzo really couldn't care any less about budget woes right now his priorities were set and he was ready to pounce on his goals. There's something else we should consider first he said while looking downwards with an evil smirk. Chikaku looked at Danzo with suspicion, he never trusted the old warhawk. Who will be the next Hokage he said in a respectful voice. So it has come to that Shikaku's mind started seeing the plan that Danzo was pulling. Can we not wait until Tsunade has recovered the fire daimyo said with curiosity, he was always a fan of Tsunade's reign, she was kind and fair in her judgment, and the economy and ninja population has been slowly picking up since the invasion. My lord Kaharu said addressing the daimyo Tsunade is still in a coma. We can't decide on a plan for the village when we don't know when she will wake up she explained to the daimyo. Besides she is partially responsible for Kanoha's destruction said Kaharu, with no disbelief in what she said. I'd thought to choose Jiraiya the daimyo said aloud to himself, I liked him, but he's gone now he said, thinking about his favorite author, in his opinion the best author of all time. So who will it be the daimyo asked, curious about their suggestion. Anzo smiled at the sights of a plan going off without a hitch. Well, Chikaku saw the smirk and his mind set off to stop him. I nominate Hada Kakashi he said a bit louder than he intended. Anzo eyed the Nara, inside he was cursing loudly, bloody Naras. Oh ho, son of the White Fang, eh he thought of all the times he had met the man, he was powerful, respectful, well known, he saw no problem with it. Yes, why not, what do you all think he asked his advisors. He's well known, powerful and respected it's true, but don't you think he is a bit too young, Winato was even younger, who was his teacher one of the advisors asked. The fourth Hokage Hamura answered immediately, finding the man not that bad of a choice. The daimyo chuckled, thinking of the connections, the fourth Hokage was Jiraiya's pupil, and Jiraiya was the pupil of the third Hokage he chuckled again. There's no problem then, he said, trying to carry on to other business. Anzo stood and smacked his cane downwards in anger, the third's teachings he said as he stared directly at the daimyo, have as good as destroyed this village. The daimyo looked shocked at the revelation, the fire lord's advisors looked upset at the disrespect he was showing, but surprisingly Kaharu and Hamura seemed interested in what he was saying. 
Akatsuki leader, who destroyed the village, was once Jiraiya's pupil, he said while looking at everyone present, a satisfied smirk emerged from his face, upon seeing the silent Nara. This is the result of sympathizing with other countries and giving them power he said off the bat, he really didn't plan to say this, but seeing the favor lean towards the son of the White Fang, he had enough. That sort of thinking is weak he shouted. This weakness led to San's betrayal and allowed Orochimaru's plan to destroy Kanoha he felt that the daimyo was slowly understanding his side. It led to the formation of Akatsuki he said, pausing after hearing the daimyo gasp. Then to Sasuke, the last remaining Ichiha leaving Kanoha for his own secret purposes he continued his rant to the silent council. What kind of hokage do we need now he asked a rhetorical question as his voice grew louder and louder. One who can put an end to this wretched situation, who can bring change to the ninja world and reinforce the laws that govern us he paused looking around. He slammed his able hand down on the desk. That man is me he finished as he stared directly at the daimyo looking for answers. The room was silent, no one moved as the fire lord pondered over what Danzo said, he turned to his advisors, they all conversed between themselves, discussing the consequences and advantages if they chose Danzo. One advisor decided to speak for their decision, maybe we should let Danzo take care of things, my lord he said with a frown obviously against the thought of Danzo being in charge. The fire lord pondered and felt that if his advisors approved then he had no problem with the idea, he was a proven leader, and it was only temporary. The Nara spoke, we can't let his fanaticism, alright it is decided, in the mind of Nara Shikaku he felt the cogs of his mind push and pull, if Kakashi was found unacceptable because of his teachings, then a person who was respected and powerful, a person loved by the people and the ninja populace. His mind traveled to Naruto, he was far more powerful than Kakashi, and he was well respected, he had the credentials, but he was too young, at best he will serve as a distraction for the Nara to come up with some other more qualified shinobi. I nominate Yuzumaki Naruto, unlike last time when he nominated Kakashi, it was taken as a serious notion, after nominating Naruto he was half sure that most of the people currently here would have laughed if it wasn't for this serious demeanor that he was left with after that very passionate speech from Danzo. The chuckle escaped Hamura please Nara, explain to us how Naruto would be a better candidate than Danzo here he said, as he gestured to the old warhawk who was surprisingly quiet after he blurted out Naruto's name. After today no one would dare speak against the wits of the Nara clan. Shikaku slowly took a deep breath in and exhaled as he readied himself for a lengthy argument that might run on for some time. Uzumaki Naruto the sixth Okage he thought as the idea seemed more and more appealing in his mind. Well Shikaku, now that you are done why don't we? Excuse me Hamura the Fire Lord cut in as he had a puzzled look about his face. I would like to hear him out, I have heard quite a bit of this Naruto character, since I have arrived he paused as he took the name under consideration, his pause caused the two advisors to take this as a serious threat to their influence and power in their village. Fire Lord, I protest, he is far too young Hamura said, trying his best to take this nomination and ruin it as best as he could, the Fire Daimyo's intrigued look about his face never left. Ah true advisor, but I feel that we are entering a new age where age and power are being less and less related the Fire Lord spoke in his politically experienced voice, look at Itachi, Anbu Captain Ad only at first memory, 1213 he said, unsure at the age he spoke about. And look at how it ended with him, he cracked under the pressure of all the responsibilities and why Danzo stood angrily at the daimyo's foolishness. He was too immature emotionally, he was overwhelmed by the responsibilities of an Anbu captain and he acted out, he had a limited amount of outlets and the loss of his close friend seemed to be the pushing point Danzo pointed out. And now you are considering giving another young man even more responsibilities than that of an Anbu captain, ask me, how would that end, in disaster, in chaos he shouted, but the fire lord didn't seem phased. Besides, he isn't as mature or emotionally prepared as the Ichiha prodigy, please listen to reason, he is a mere gen in Kaharu said, backing up the claims of Danzo. Not to mention he graduated last in his class Hamura pointed out. The gen into cage, it's unheard of Kaharu shouted as loud as you could without being disrespectful. In wind country, their village cage was previously a, now he is one of the more powerful and successful of their small history. He looked at the other members of the meeting and sighed at seeing no progress. So true you three are in your claims, maybe he isn't prepared, but shouldn't that be assessed by his maturity, and not that of others at the same age he explained. The Fire Lord chuckled, after all this arguing we haven't even heard Shikaku's reasoning he chuckled again, Shikaku he said staring at him directly with respect, while Shikaku just sighed, somehow everyone else did the arguing, he just initiated the controversy. Fire Lord he said addressing the daimyo I was told that you are permitted to hear S-rank secrets he said while holding his hands to his chin, he could see everyone around him was pondering over what he would reveal. Yes Nara, I am permitted, unfortunately my advisors are not he said as he gestured for them to leave. The five left, all in a military-like manner, but some grumbling could be heard. Continue he said as Shikaku stood, all in a respectful manner. 
Naruto Uzumaki is a genuine true but he said as he looked at the advisors, what Hamura and Kahara forgot to mention, is that he was on the verge of graduating on his rookie year, alone he said in his aloof voice, that could be considered a Nara accent. He graduated last of his class, but in the exams he defeated the now special and Hyuga genius, and the current Kazuki Ajgara during the invasion he said, pausing for the Fire Lord to take all this in. We also looked over the plans of Orochimaru, apparently Gara was there, trump card if you will, and Naruto single-handedly defeated him he said, hoping to prove some sort of connection. He faced Orochimaru and Kabuto, a very skilled high, and defeated him with a technique that was ranked high A. He also, just recently defeated the one man, who destroyed this great village with a one, a man who not even Jurei or Tsune could defeat, a man who led a terrorist group of the most powerful new nins ever, and most importantly he shows compassion and caring for every living person he said with a nod. A ninja that shows mercy, ha, who could follow a man that wouldn't kill for his country Danzo said with a chuckle. The Fire Lord spoke up that is true, a shinobi that opposes killing, if they live how do we know we are not simply stopping someone who would try and kill me or you in the future the Fire Lord explained. Explained. Shikaku say the reason in this, but the years with his child, had shown him Naruto's finer points. My son Shikamaru, said he felt death and evil when he was around the younger current Kazuki Ajgara, he said he felt he would kill him, if he just said the wrong word he paused. Naruto had the chance to kill him, he was near death's door, and Naruto let him live, now because of Naruto's intervention he is living a happy and successful life, because of him our relations with Suna have never been stronger, Pain the leader of Akatsuki I was told he didn't kill him, he gave him a chance at life, and guess what happened next Shikaku said, as he felt the books raise his reward for his death right now. The Gata returned all the people he had killed, and if it wasn't for the kind heart of Naruto's, we would be busy digging graves, rather than rebuilding our village he said with a sad smile. Naruto has made relations better with many of the smaller villages, bird, wave, snow, waterfall, I could go on, but my point being made is that he gives Konoha friends and allies. Even if I remember correctly he has had several contacts from other countries, willing to have political marriages involving only Naruto Shikaku said with a perverted grin, apparently he has left a certain impression on the young women of our allies. Shikaku felt not only everyone, apart from Danzo, but himself find Naruto a more appealing leader than Danzo. Just outside, right now the people are cheering and praising him for what he has done he said, as he felt like he was doing something oh so right. He has the respect of the people, and Shinobi he said with a smile, knowing full well ever since the exams, have found the boy less of a nuisance, unlike some other candidates he said, not even trying to ignore the glare that was directed to him. He was trained by Kakashi for his gen and team Shikaku said with a bored look, he is the apprentice of Jureya he said again, he inhaled hard as he readied himself for some consequences to his actions, and as long as the S rank law stands, he is not the child of Minato Namikaze he said as the room went quiet. But the room erupted into shouts of protest and ramblings, the Fire Lord raised his hand as the remaining council members slowly grew quiet. He has the heritage he said as he thought about the strength and power of the fourth. He has the power he said as he knew of his adventures, facing Gara, Niji, Orochimaru and Kabuto at a very young age, and now the Akatsuki leader. He has the respect of the villagers, and the shinobi of Kanoha he said as he watched a far window seeing the masses cheer for him so loudly, he had never seen them celebrate so happily even during the fourth Hokage's introduction party. Anzo saw the look in his eyes and saw that Shikaku was convincing the idiotic daimyo, he stood with no care of respect, he has been taught the same teachings that have made the village how it is today he said, pointing out at the damages. The teachings of the first were taught and embraced by the second, he in turn taught it to the third said Shikaku. The third taught Jureya and Tsunade the fifth, each of them embraced the teachings, Jureya taught not just the fourth, but his son as well Shikaku explained as he watched the fire lord nod his head knowing the connections. Anzo presence chain Shikaku said glaring at the warhawk. He says that these teachings have destroyed Kanoha he paused, seeing he had the daimyo's full attention. But these teachings, these acts of compassion, the will to fire all of these values that we hold close, are what we are to embrace Danzo's changes of war and death, over peace and compassion for others he simply shook his head. Naruto is currently the only he thought for a second as he had always boy, but hearing what he has said, it shows him in this new light, he was no boy, he was man who will continue these teachings that have made us survive against three great shinobi wars, against odds greater than any we could comprehend, against invasion after invasion. Whether it is sound or Akatsuki we have survived and fought to become the greatest village Shikaku said, he could imagine a huge nap after this. Naruto Uzumaki has earned this title more than any of us, let alone this old war hawk Shikaku said, pointing disrespectfully at Danzo. If the Fire Lord raised his hand, Shikaku breathed in deeply as the daimyo rose from his seat. You have proven your case Shikaku he said with a semi-smile. 
Bamboo san how do you feel taking orders from Naruto he asked politely. He always hated those masked fellows. Very creepy vibe. Just knowing that they could kill you at a moment's notice. Sure they could do so just as easily. But the look they had about them. Didn't scream it out as much as a jacket. I have previously worked with Naruto through several missions as his commander he said as he coughed slightly, pausing for effect, Naruto as an individual, is clumsy, loud, unorthodox, he acts before thinking, he's brash, straight to the point, and stubborn Danzo smiled at the man. I would have to say if Tsunade was here, she too would recommend Naruto for the position as the sixth, he said as Danzo for the twentieth time stood up in anger. I protest, I, I have had enough of this disrespect, you will sit when you address me, Danzo the daimyo said with a newfound emotion of annoyance, spoken through his voice. He stood for a second and crumbled down glaring daggers at the Nara and Anbu. Anbu, continue. The Anbu captain continued, I speak for myself obviously, and not Tsunade, but in my small time and knowing Naruto he said as he cleared his voice. I would risk my life for him, and I know exactly he would do the same, if not more, for me or any man, woman or child of Konoha he stared directly at the daimyo. To me sir nothing makes him more fit to be a hokage he shows he said as he chuckled slightly remembering the first time he met him. The will of fire, it was silent. I have heard enough the fire lord said. He rose from his seat, closing his fan, so it is decided. Anzo closed his eyes, seeing his dreams taken away from him because of Nara and Anbu. I, the Fire Lord appoint, Naruto Uzumaki as the Rakidame Hokage he said clearly. After the small expected announcement, neither of the advisors spoke out whether they found Naruto fit for the position, nor did they have nothing to say at this point. The daimyo clapped his hands together, and a messenger boy appeared through the only entry door. Yes sire said the small sickly looking boy, covered in light clothing and bare dirty feet. Send Uzumaki Naruto to us he said with a smile. Yes sire he answered and moved with surprising speeds, Danzo just grinded his teeth and made a signal, a root soldier came and whispered some nonsense in his ear. The frown worn across his face or what was shown of it, I have some urgent matters to attend to, my underling will handle any business in my absence he said in a voice that showed his displeasure. The root member sat in the chair as the advisors walked slowly back in, Danzo eyed Shikaku before leaving, he just returned it with a loud yawn as he rolled his shoulders. Bloody Nara was the last thing the council heard before the poof of smoke closed around his body. Sore loser, W what the confused blonde asked. We of the council have appointed you, Yuzumaki Naruto, the Rakidame Hokage he repeated, his arms raised and his chin high and mighty. Naruto looked shocked, no, he was more than shocked, he shook his head, his knees were shaking, he needed a seat. I he started, this was all too soon, first the villagers, now this, his dreams were being thrusted him far too soon, he looked around and found a spare chair, he rushed forwards and grabbed the seat, and leaned back against the back and side as his knees nearly gave in. Do you accept the daimyo asked, certainly pleased with the man so far, that is until his reaction to the news, which was, to the daimyo, a bit of character. He was everything he thought a leader should be, before he announced his promotion, he showed true confidence in himself, he seemed a bit shaken up with the newfound love from the villagers, but it was all understandable for a former village pariah. He was far from gay, the orange book in his side pocket definitely proved it, but he instantly noticed the handsome looks of the young blonde, not that it mattered to him, it was just a matter of politics, it is a very important, if shallow, trait that have proceeded in the short time of politics. The cage is the face of their village, the better looking the face, the more appealing the village looks to an outside business owner, it's shallow, but it's human nature. The fire lord knew he was strong, that powerful aura that followed him as he entered the room, just made his belief in this boy intensify. He looked at the boy worriedly, he really was beginning to see the upsides of this boy. If he refused he might be forced into a corner with the issue, and appoint the now less appealing Danzo. Well he continued as the boy was still in shock, it was too soon, what about Sasuke, what about Tsunade, what about his promise? Why me? he managed to say, still in hard shock. The fire lord smiled kindly, he was young, we all wondered at first ourselves he laughed a hearty laugh, but fortunately Shikaku here he said pointing at the scarred Nara, who saluted at the eventual leader. He nominated you, and well that led to a very passionate response from Danzo he said with a smile. He saw that Naruto still was unconvinced, he sighed in frustration, please Naruto, stay seated and hear us, out he said as he gestured to the opposite seat to the daimyos. Naruto willingly sat down, feeling the weight of future responsibilities pulling him down. The daimyo pulled his fan out once more, he looked at the council and then Naruto. Please Naruto, explain to me why not you he said, waving the fan lightly. I'm too young he said silently, a part of him knew he wasn't ready, another not wanting him to lose an opportunity at his lifetime goal. How old are you the daimyo asked, 16 turning 17 in 2 months, sir. The Kazakiage, a personal friend of yours I've been told, is also 16 and has been in office for several months, so I see age is no problem for Suna, then it is no problem for Konoha he said with a familiar smile. 
I haven't even led a team, how could I even lead an entire village Naruto asked, convinced that age really couldn't be used as an excuse with these people. What proves a man needs to know how he can or can't lead? Does he need an array of battle scars or a record of battles and wars won? Does he need a shiny medal for a single act of good luck? He paused slightly. A leader to me, needs to care for his fellow man, he needs to know sacrifice and loss, to me everything else will follow he saw the resolve slowly lead the boy. I just don't know, it's too much, what if I mess up Naruto said, never truly understanding the ramifications of being a leader and cage until now. You are a strong young shinobi, you have defeated countless enemies, against amazing odds, you have more than what it takes to protect the weak, and are respected enough to lead your troops without their hesitation he paused. You have the heritage of legends and the upbringings of a modest man that believes in loyalty and honor he said, making the blonde scratch his head in embarrassment. Your case of complete loyalty to this village and its well-being has been rewarded he said, patting his shoulder, first he pointed at a familiar Anbu. You have the support of the Anbu captain and his troops then he pointed at Shikaku. You have the support of the Jonin commander then he pointed at the two elderly advisors and shook his head in a never mind the motion, then he stepped back, gesturing to himself. You have the support and money of one of the richest men in the lands he said very modestly, he brought Naruto towards the large stone ledge. Naruto who still was only beginning to understand was moved towards the ledge, he looked at the village below, he could see the small villagers working together, helping one another, rebuilding their lives once again, it pained his heart that he could have stopped all this destruction. But most importantly you have the support of the people he said in a reserved voice. The people are who you protect, who you lead he placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder, these people need your protection, they need you to let he turn him towards the daimyo. Will you lead your village, will you become the sixth Hokage, will you become the Rakudame Hokage the daimyo asked. Naruto paused, he felt confused as to why he was even considering going against his dream, his lifetime goal, what kept him going at long training sessions, what kept him alive during those difficult times, what convinced him never to act out or fight back against the villagers hateful ways. Suddenly he answered, without his mind even acknowledging, his voice spoke without his realization, until he finished. I accept the position of Daimyo Sama Naruto said with a newly found smile. Thank you Hokage Sama, your position will be announced in two days he replied, happy with the results of his pushy attitude. And I just ask one thing sir he said, feeling an issue needed to be attended to after all these events. Sure what is he asked. Naruto entered the Hokage's office, just saying that it seemed strange and unusual. He looked at the large chair and desk. He was surprised to see the dark oak and ceremonial designs carved into the desk that were usually covered with loose business paperwork. He sat on the worn chair and instantly heard a knock to the door, ah come in he said, not sure of how to welcome someone. Shizun entered and walked towards him, so how are you feeling she said softly. Overwhelmed he said simply, he looked around the room, six framed paintings, each of the hookages in some sort of dramatic pose, and a single painting of the village, there were two spare seats and a couch in the corner, a large lamp in the other corner. He looked closer at each painting, the first hokage had his arms crossed with a scary look about his face, and trees emerging from the ground upwards. The second hokage held his hands together in a kai form with water rushing around in a dramatic fashion, and the ocean and sunset in the background. The third hokage held his staff bow in one hand and a kunai in the other, wind blasting to one direction. The fourth had the Rasengan held in his hand, his legendary three-pronged kunai in the other, with his yellow flash following his body, and his feet were planted on a red bumpy surface that was most likely the boss summons of the toads. And how is the old lady he asked softly, he said as he looked at the fifth picture, Sunade missing her green jacket, wielding two chakra scalpels, he smiled at the look of seriousness about her face. He wondered what his painting would look like. Unfortunately she hasn't gotten any better, only time will tell right now she said staring outside the room's single window. Shizun caught his attention, well right now you will just have to deal unfortunately she sighed at the difficult times ahead, you have an important meeting with a team from Kumo in half an hour, so be on your best behavior Naruto just huffed and nodded, Shizun backed away before remembering something. Okage-sama I almost forgot, she said as she left the office for a second and brought out the Hokage's hat and robe. You need to wear this in the presence of foreign nin she said as she threw the clothing to him. Naruto just caught the clothing effortlessly and looked at it suspiciously, don't worry it's new clothes, not used by any of the other hokages she said with a sweat drop. She closed the door as she left and left Naruto to his business, he sighed as he put the hokage hat on, and then the robes, he felt the orange jacket and he hokage robes cling together uncomfortably, he sighed, took off both, and replaced the orange jacket with the hokage robe, he didn't button it, he really didn't feel like doing too much with the suit. He still had his black muscle shirt underneath and his necklace that he treasured greatly, even more so now. He looked in the mirror and didn't think he looked too bad, not bad at all. The hat pushed his headband down, so he wrapped it around his right bicep, letting his hair down. 
He looked at the desk and saw the closed compartments. He opened the first three, full with empty sake bottles of course. The fourth held several files, each under the different hidden village and secret folders on the few s rank missions that had classified written all over it. Naruto was curious and went through a few, the first one he grabbed, Suna. It was fairly loaded with papers filled with their shinobi information and economic reviews and alliance papers. He looked closer at the alliance papers, just out of mere curiosity, and saw a letter written out by Gara with the heading political marriage. His eyes squinted at the prospect of a political marriage, a person being forced to breed with another, sometimes without the other's consent, a life decision to be forced to love a stranger or deny and live a life of exclusion and political hate. Naruto really hated the idea of forced love. He lived a life of lonely nights, the thought that he or anybody would be used in some sort of political cementation of alliances. He wondered and thought that if he could make a law against political marriages, he smiled as he now had the power to overrule and make laws for the better of his village, the prospect excited him. He was a little curious of who was being offered on both sides, but before he could read it, Shizune entered with a huff. Shizune entered with a bow, Naruto sneered at this, Kakashi is here she, said I'll let him in he said with an uncertain voice, one that didn't know how the process went. Kakashi entered in his aloof manner, with Shizune following in tow, his orange book held out and his single eye reading the lines, as Shizune placed a pile of paperwork on his desk. Naruto was sure Kakashi saw him earlier, or heard something before because with the Hokage robes and the being in the Hokage office, it doesn't take a genius to figure this out. So what's new Kakashi asked, again in his nonchalant voice, Naruto just sighed and rubbed his temples. He threw a scroll to him, and Kakashi grabbed it without looking up. This is a very important mission that Shizune has set up in the absence of the Hokage he said, gesturing to the woman at his side. I need you to request some supplies and builders from Suna he said, grab ten or so chunins and escort them back he commanded. Bakashi saluted and left in a puff of smoke, Naruto turned to Shizune, and I need you to keep Guy and Lee far, far away from the foreign builders he said in a serious tone, they are close friends and all, but I feel nightmares about them will affect productivity he said, as Shizune nodded and looked for the duo. The team from Kumo is here, Hokage-sama she said, using the new honorific, which he knew he would never get used to. Send them and Naruto said as he adjusted his hat, reading himself for his first official meeting. What a day. Naruto repeated as he thought about this extremely long day, he gave a heavy sigh to the air, as his mind went numb with all the thoughts. Naruto walked slowly to his temporary housing unit, originally he was offered a large wooden cabin home, with furnishings and luxury level food, but Naruto gave his home to a large family of 12, seeing their thankful looks was a good enough replacement, even if he had to give up that ramen filled cupboard he had his eye on the entire time every single flavor. He shook his head at images of that delicious flavor packed every single flavor. People looked at Naruto strangely as they witnessed him slap himself silly while he walked into his small industrial tent, made of a single sheet of whatever tents were made of, covering the entire top and sides. He looked around feeling the mixed emotions suddenly lean upon him. He had one hell of a day to say at least. He tried to desperately find a distraction to his rising worries, he figured if he looked around a bit, his mind would wander from the upcoming events. He looked around his room and had to admit, it was already better looking than his former apartment, sure there was no bathroom, there was a public bathroom open to all, with toilets and showers and such, but Naruto usually avoided it at all cost, he had a message burned into his mind whenever he saw that crummy place. Emergencies only. He didn't have a kitchen, he shared a campfire with his fellow villagers, and a cook was assigned to every 50 or so civilians. He was just lucky enough to be assigned with his favorite chief, being Hokage had nothing to do with it, honest, also he did have a small box underneath his mattress that contained all the ramen that he could find within the ruins. He had cuts all over his hands at the end it, but whenever he cooked a fresh brew and shared it with the children of neighboring tents, he always found himself saying it was worth it. All in his lonesome tent was a mattress to the right that covered a good portion of the available space, a mahogany desk and matching bookcase, filled with all the instructions and political history of his village and the other village, and a large maroon-colored rug with golden-colored toads imprinted into the rug. There was also his summoning scroll leaning to the side. Now naturally he was originally concerned about just leaving it there, but seeing he trusted the anbu that was assigned to the tent, he was fine with leaving it there, he would bring it with him on any long-distance mission or something, just to be safe though. He laid down on his dark maroon quilt and dirty white mattress and pillow, his mind thinking about all the events that unfolded today, while well his instincts were on high alert for another reason. Ever since the village accepted Naruto, he's never been happier, truly, but in some cases, certain females were a bit too acceptant. Women have been following his every movement, he was being tracked like a nuke nin on enemy territory, he knows he would have been jumped by now, if it wasn't for the anbu nins outside. 
and he had to assign the very powerful Anbu to say the least. Believe it or not, Naruto knew this was going to happen, it wasn't arrogance or anything, nothing like that at all. But during his travels with the pervert, he stopped at many villages and cities, and he was constantly surrounded by groups of giggling girls, pointing at him, with blushes on their faces, and a look of lust and admiration in their eyes. He wondered if this is what Sasuke ever went through with his fan club. But how annoying it is, he wondered if that was the pushing point. Naruto's mind went to a very logical place at the moment and thought that, having beautiful women constantly throwing themselves at him, it's not a really bad thing to live with, is all Naruto was thinking. Better them than going to an accused child molester. Arachimaru a beautiful woman, Arachimaru a beautiful woman, sigh, what a hard choice, Naruto said as he chuckled to himself. Anyway, it went unnoticed by him of course, but Jiraiya eventually pointed it out with a jealous look about his face, Naruto had to admit, it helped his confidence at an important time in his life, what with his problems with Sasuke and his broken promise to Sakura, his feelings going ignored by the one he truly felt like he loved at the time, and then he finds out that if it ever came to a point where he could never have Sakura. And there have been so many times. There might be some sliver of hope that he could be with another. He just wanted to hear someone, hell anyone, utter the small, but oh so significant sentence, I love you. His mind went white for a second, his body froze, a sharp pain flashed through his head. His headache at the thought, his mind was rushing as images of the fated battle between him and one of the pains rushed and raced through his mind, an outline of someone he just couldn't make out appeared, he tried desperately to remember this individual, but the image faded into the shadows of his mind. He felt relieved and relaxed after a while, he chuckled sadly to his lonely self, the mere thought of someone uttering I love you made his body react negatively, his chuckles slowly faded as his mind began to wonder if he could ever accept a person saying that to him. Now granted ever since he saved the village, hearing I love you from random strangers was very common to him right now, but it wasn't exactly the sentence, yet the look in the eye, the closeness of him and her, how he could slowly grab the person and give them a wholehearted smile and hug. Thinking about love it sounded so unrealistic to him, not that he didn't believe in romantic love, he has seen it with his own eyes, whether it be between a man and woman, or same sex, it really didn't matter to him, love was love. But the thought of him with another, that he believed, truly loved him, not for his political position or how high he is ranked, or even how good looking he is, just someone that accepted him, and that means all of him, and that shamefully includes the fox. And in his mind, realistically, he just doesn't think a woman or a lover could look past that damn demon fox in his gut. Two women sneezed at the same time, one in Suna and another somewhere I just couldn't make out at the moment. He sighed as he looked around, his sight traveled to another corner in his tent, seeing a pile of gifts, in the other corner from several of the ninja clans, but mostly from merchant and land-rich families, looking to get on the better side of the leader of their village. Naruto just looked at it with a frown, he remembered most of those family names, they were usually the worst, not just ignoring but making fun of his existence, pointing and spreading rumors, calling him names, everything, and now that he was the commander-in-chief, they were trying to win back some favor, simply disgusting. He went to his feet with a grunt and made his way to the tent exit, he opened the loose fabric and took in a sight that he truly loved. Naruto could see the hills and rivers, covered with various different colored trees and raging rivers in the distance, but what really made the view was the several tents surrounding a single large campfire, with villagers helping one another, buildings being erected in the distance and the elderly and young, talking with that special language that was held between grandchildren and grandparents. Naruto sat on a small wooden chair that he placed next to his tent, just for this beautiful sight. As Naruto breathed in a deep breath of fresh air, he couldn't help but notice the change in his demeanor. He felt more reserved during times where he would have blown up and learned to embrace quiet times like this. Although with all the improvements to his personality he was constantly stressed at the same time, the stress and pressures the position held were far from Naruto's young imagination. His father, the third, Granny Tsunade, and he was sure the first and second Hokage were all plagued by the curse of paperwork, and they regularly announced their displeasure to whomever cared to listen. Originally Naruto felt that they were just lazy and were overreacting to the large amounts of paperwork, but after experiencing just several days of 8-hour shifts, granted with all the destruction and chaos he may get a few more than average, but he was already starting to feel the stress after just a few days is a bit concerning. And without the thrill of a possible S-rank mission looming and combining that with the knowledge that you can't leave and that the most powerful ninja within the village is being used as a simple political figure, signing papers and kissing babies, where he could be out training, becoming stronger to protect his village. Beside, it was a flawed system. Naruto pulled his Konoha headband off and placed it on his lap as he stared at the symbol of the leaf village, as he stared he couldn't help but feel his ambition disappear. He felt that his sole goal in life was to become accepted by the people of the village, and with his achievement in hand, and his hokage position being handed or forced, some would say to him. 
Naruto would wonder what a young six-year-old Naruto would have done in his situation, most likely embrace it and berate him for being how he was. Sigh. And the position of Hokage was, to Naruto, a position that demanded acceptance, respect and love, something that as a child, he wanted the most and would do anything for it, whether it was stealing the Hokage's scroll in the middle of the night, whether it was a Hyuga genius, saying he could never achieve his goals, and that life was destiny's which, all the blockades that stood between him and his current position as leader of the Leaf Village, made him who he is. The most stubborn, knuckle-headed, unpredictable ninja of Konoha. L of all the shinobi lands. And now seeing himself as a more reserved man, who has no goal, who lost his ambition, lost his fire, well it made him sad. He thought that once he was handed the Hokage's hat and as the masses clapped and cheered in the distance, the curtains would close, or he would walk into the sunlight as it happens in all of those great heroic stories. But with this newfound reality pushed upon him, he realized something else is going to be needed from him, whether it be a goal or ambition that seemed out of this world to anyone, even a Hokage. Naruto continued thinking that with all the available resources, he could do anything. Anything, the thought lingered deep within the depths of his mind. War, peace, economy, education, damn near everything was within his grasp. Anything, he thought of how flawed the Genin team system was, he could change that. His mind traveled to how the clans were allowed special grounds accessed only to them, he could stop that. The improper conduct of the Anbu Ops in certain areas and villages, Iwa, Suna, etc, etc. The bribes taken by the gatekeepers to let in illegal aliens and enemy spies in. The easily accessed and undermanned library. Their lack of users and overly favored ninjutsu users. The lack of security in the lower poor areas and the high amount of security in the rich areas. It could all change, just because of him, all because of him. He could make a difference. He could make the difference of his village prospering into a land of rich, strong and peaceful people, to his village being a mere afterthought in the history pages. The thought excited him, he leapt from his lone chair and made his way to the Hokage's tent. Things were going to change, a lot of things. Naruto currently was on his work chair shirtless and sweaty, with all the excitement of his newfound power and influence. Naruto put his writing hand down, read in overuse as he finished a letter to his best friend the Kazakiage. Naruto smiled as he folded the letter and stamped the seal of the Hokage on it, Naruto smirked and never left as he looked at the letter. He still hasn't told Gara about his promotion, he wanted to surprise his best friend, he was sure he would be happy for him, Naruto really looked forward to this. Shizun he called for his recently assigned assistant. Yes Hokage-sama she said, her face a little flushed at the sight of a shirtless Hokage. I need you to get this to the Kazakiage as soon as possible he said with a smile, seeing the red-faced Shizun. Is it time Naruto said with a serious voice. In 10 minutes, the ceremony will begin and you will begin your announcement to the village Shizun said with a lustful eye. Also I need you to get me Kakashi he said, grabbing another piece of paper and handing it to his assistant. Shizun's eyes were transfixed on the body of Naruto's, the muscles and rippling biceps, the hardened muscles covering every inch of his stone sculpted body, small scars in places that seemed to enhance his rugged looks, the small layer of sweat covering his body, and the candle in the background seemed to make him look like a god. Shizun Shizun Naruto repeated as he waved his hand over her face, trying to get her attention. Ah yes, Okajama she said looking shyly away from him as his body was so close to hers. Can you do that for me Naruto asked innocently to his sister. You can do anything to me I mean yes, yes Naruto-kun, er, I mean Hokage-sama she said as she left in a hurry to finish her tasks, while well, a small amount of blood was leaking out of her left nostril. But before she could leave Naruto grabbed her arm, she looked at the sad face of Naruto and wondered what was happening. I'm sorry he said, hugging her. Shizun closed her eyes as the warmth spread around her. I just want to thank you for stopping me during the Kumo meeting he paused. Things got a bit out of hand, I just want to thank you he said, still holding her close. Shizun closed her eyes as the warmth seemed to overload her senses, her mind went numb as he held her close. Thank you, the village hidden in the rocks, show them what you got. Akazuchi, Kurizuchi. Please take good care of Tsuchikage-sama one of the elders called out. The shortest and oldest man in all of Iwa and quite possibly all of the shinobi lands, held his hip in pain as he readied himself mentally for a long and most definitely painful trip. Ah, it's a pain going to a meeting at my age. The man said leaning against his old trusty staff. You youngsters don't understand what it's like when your hips are virtual time bombs yelled his followers as he looked out at his lands. The female bodyguard, named Kurizuchi, currently wearing the standard uniform of Iwa Jonin replied, with netting covering her legs and a cocky look about her face. Why don't retire you then Gramps, you can't really rely on your former glory, forever she said laughing at the look her superior gave her. The biggest of the three, a very large and hefty man named Akazuchi with a smile leaned down while laughing. Ha 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 I'll take your luggage, Tsuchikajama the big man said with a smile. The old man glared out at the mountain of a man and made a threatening stance which to an average viewer seemed very hilarious. 
An old man that reached to the bottom of his knees pointing at a man whose forehead reached some clouds was very funny, don't touch, Akazuchi. I don't need your help. The old man then placed the strap securely to his shoulders, glared at his bodyguards. His last thought before lifting was I'll show him. The loud groin holding, heart stopping, hair raising snap, to the point where Kurizuchi had to flinch at the sound, that Tsuchikage's eyes popped out as his mouth opened to record proportions. It all went white before, a sharp flash of pain rushed through his body. It didn't seem that bad until a second passed, then another, and another, and, holy sweet Kami, a cage can only go through so much he has faced bloody limitless enemies, he has gone through hours and hours of torture, yet these damn hips. Oh, my hips the old man screaming to the heavens in agony his body clenched inwards as the unpleasant feeling never left his elderly body, every single muscle screamed at him to put the damn bag down, the only thing keeping him upright was the shock and Iowa pride that he was famous for. Gurizuchi, with a huge smile, laughing at the old man's condition she looked at the pain-filled man said, so, what do you say, should you send someone else in your place? The old cage managed to say in the middle of feminine screams, don't be ridiculous, who do you think I am he pointed and accusing at his disrespectful bodyguard. He screamed to the clouds, I am the great and fearsome leader of the Wagaker he looked dead in the eyes of Akazuchi, I'll carry my own language he said, threatening the giant man with his manners and stuff. Gurizuchi sighed and pinched the bridge of her nose, good grief what a stubborn old man. Akazuchi decided against the will of his commander, he then lifted the old man and his luggage, and said with a huff alright, carry your own luggage then, let's go. The old cage wanted to fight back, but the soft fat of Akazuchi meshed well with his lower back, he never felt better, he decided, what the hell and enjoyed the ride. The village hidden in the water, now take good care of yourself. The head said as he looked at the Mizukage's bodyguards. The elderly advisor then slowly handed the hat of the Mizukage to the newly assigned wearer, happy to see a young face smile at his old and weary face, full of wisdom and age. The elderly man's hand wavering and shook due to his age, while the others watched with a smile. Don't let anything go wrong the old man whispered as he leaned in deeply to his ceremonial snake staff. The Mizukage replied, holding the hat on her hand and said, I swear on my name as Mizukage, that I will fulfill my duty to my village she said in her elegant and soft voice, a voice that just didn't seem to suit that of a killer such as herself. The old man slowly turned and shook less as he then turned to her escorts, ouch Ajuro please guard Kazakiage don't know well. I think I'll probably be fine. Dot said the boy holding a very large sword the shape of a dried fish on his back, adjusting his glasses as sweat poured down slowly his neck, not being used to all this attention, the elder replied slowly. Have faith in yourself, you are strong he said with a grandfather-like smile. That's why, you were chosen to guard me, okay Chijuro the Mizukage looked down at the nervous boy and smiled, Chijuro blushed like a tomato and nodded with a smile. Chijuro thought with a blush she's so kind. Uh yeah I'll try my best he said with his blush still predominate on his face, I hope he finished. All you need to say is yes ma'am no one wants to hear your waffling ow said quite rudely to the younger of the two. A man. You kids these days just be a man ow ranted on, but the Mizukage went blank as those two words seemed to mix what did he say. A man a man needs a man need a man. The Mizukage suddenly appeared beside Ao who was still telling Chijuro off, I'm just giving the kid advice when I was his age I, shut up Ao or I'll kill you the Mizukage whispered into his ear with enough venom laced in her voice to kill any lesser man. Ao just looked at the Mizukage as if she was crazy, she was crazy, he wasn't going to be harsh on the boy was he, is that why she threatened him, why was she threatening him whenever he talks to Chijuro. Come on Chijuro she said sweetly ow let's go she said harshly at the man who thinks it's funny that she needs a man. Oh but how it is true it was seeing the skies above would there ever be one for her, would there ever be a happy ending for a woman in the position of power. If only there was some handsome powerful nin out there that can challenge her. If only, the village hidden in the clouds. Shai, Derry, let's go said the rakage, readied himself and jumped through the glass stained window in a dramatic fashion. Follow me the impatient rakage yelled as he expected his bodyguards to follow suit. The rakage's secretary held her head as she sighed, not again. Both Shai and Derry stood up from kneeling and said, let's go Derry Shai said, encouraging his fellow to follow. Nah I think I'll use the door I'll catch up with you soon, enough Derry said lazily. Shai was about to follow until he saw where the rakage landed. Hey Derry look he said pointed at where he landed, Derry just groaned inwardly as he saw where he landed. Derry handed Shai a purse of gold coins, who Shai just pocketed immediately. Wow, pinpoint really Derry said, although disappointed and impressed with the landing. I think he did it on purpose Shai said, looking down at the poor man. Nah no sane man would do that on female land Bunite Derry said with a sad voice. Female bathhouses are the reason for living for all men, yet it kills so, many Shai said in a voice filled with wisdom on the fact. Hope so Derry said. So stares it, is Shai said as he couldn't watch the carnage anymore. Yay, I think that's the best decision right now Derry said, agreeing with the other dot. 
the village hidden in the sand. The fifth Kazakiyaj looked away from the desert sun as his vision traveled to the civilians who loved him to the point of seeing him off on an especially hot desert day there to see him off. The people he swore to protect, the civilians, the ninja, the children and the elderly, he would risk his life for, the people, his life, his precious people. Please take care of yourself, Gara-sama. Damari-san, Kankuro-san, please take good care of kazakiyaj sama Damari waved her hand to the villagers, her cloak moving with the desert wind. We will dot she said with a smile as she waved to her fan. Kankuro however, rolling his eyes and said, not like he needs bodyguards anyway upset he had to leave, he rather stay home and work on his new creation. Gara said simply as he turned his back to the villagers, all right let's go dot he said in his steady voice. Ankura was about to say something but a shadow and a flash caught the sand sibling's attention. Yes Anbu San Gara said as a Kanoha Anbu approached him, he was strong enough to take on this Anbu and he didn't feel any negative or aggressive auras from the man, so they wouldn't do anything brash. I have a message from the Hokage the Anbu said in a soft voice, bowing as he handed the Kazakiage his scroll. Gara read the scroll carefully, here he read it just to be sure of what Kanoha was asking. What is it about Gara Tamari asked, curious about the message. We are to meet and travel with the Hokage Gara said as his eyes were fixated on the handwriting, it seemed familiar. Why Kankuro asked, confused as to why Leaf would make such a request. Seems to me a sort of symbol of our new alliance Tamari said aloud, more to herself than to the others present, to show our unity with each Leaf Tamari thought with her highly intelligent political science remark. When in reality it was Naruto wanting to pull a prank on Gara. Sounds about right Kankuro said, thinking that it was the right time to sound like he knew what was being said around him, when he really didn't have a clue. Yay, 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 Kankuro Tamari said, looking through the little game her younger brother was playing. Enough now, Anbu Sanyume, leave he said as the nin nodded, bowed and left for home. Off to the summit, the Mizukage ran with the wind as she followed Chijuro and out tailing her. As the time passed she couldn't help but feel the loss of warmth at her side, the lonely feeling that she knew her home would be empty when she returned, the thought that always stayed with her was that she in fact, needed a man. She was an old-fashioned type when it came to her men, she wanted a man that was powerful, a man that would protect her, and with her being a cage-level nin that already gave her slim pickings. She would want a man that had that rugged look about his face, not some fancy high-nosed spoiled daimyo, but a war hero, a man with a few scars, a man that was tough and knew when to take over, that knew when to tell her off and call her. Her mind was racing, her body was heating and getting damp, sweat was forming in more than one place, she prayed that her bodyguards were concentrating on the surroundings and not herself. She heard So say something, not being in the mood she immediately cut him off say anymore, and I'll kill you she said in a horny and angry mood. Now just stopped in his tracks, he was just saying what love weather it was, and she cut him off with another death threat. Geez what did he do, he thought, scratching his head in confusion. Kijuro was equally confused, trying to lighten up the mood he said the first thing that came to his mind. Now, I ah summit here we come he said as everyone else sweat dropped. Faster, Akazuchi, faster the old cage yelled as he rode his bodyguard like a betting horse. We are nearly there Akazuchi said in a serious voice. I can't make it stop the old cage said in an injured voice, his old eyes seeing a green bush to the side. He rushed as fast as a cage could run, he turned a corner for privacy and let nature run its course. Akazuchi looked at the smaller, you had to feed him some of that Raymond crap didn't you he said shaking his head disapprovingly. I didn't know it would do that Kurizuchi said, trying to hold back a small laughing fit. He's an old man, you know he would have been crowning by the time we were too far from any of the public toilets Akazuchi said. The sound of 10 kilogram heavy mud landing against the ground came to their ears, then a pain voice screaming to the heavens. My hips the cage screamed. Are you ready for Naruto-kun Shizun said, seeing the Hokage in full uniform. Wait a sec Shizun said, pulling down the Hokage hat's veil, let's make it a big surprise for everyone she said with a small chuckle. I'm ready Naruto said as the doors opened, hearing the full blast of the masses below, ready to celebrate a new part of their village, a new part of their history. The morning clouds parted as the rising sun emerged, citizens and shinobi, merchants and farmers, the young and elderly all gathered together for the ceremonial Hokage announcement, every citizen was waiting for their new leader impatiently, all at a single spot, a truly amazing sight for any and all to see. Dai Sensei, Lee, Dai Sensei, Lee, Georgia, would you guys cut it out already the angry Tenton yelled as the crowd of innocent civilians and children cringed at the sight of two men holding each other, with a sunset in the background. The crowd gave a small thankful applause to the savior of the moment, and then went about their business. Tenton blushed at the attention and as it soon faded, she shot a deadly glare at the Green Beast duo, as she continued to rant off her early morning fumes. You two can have your borderline homosexual moments at some other time she said, talking over their responses filled with comments were not gay and such, right now we and every single citizen and ninja of Kanoha is here, can you two behave without me being reminded of your spandex, steroid enhanced eyebrow ways she said in way a mother disciplines her child. 
but, no but she said, cutting off Lee before he could even start be quiet, be still and no hugging she said, finishing it off with an unsheathed kunai being unleashed. Niji just watched with a smirk as the top Tajutsu shinobi got talked down to like mere children, who knew she had that sort of a temper. Hush now I believe the ceremonial induction is beginning Niji said, trying to calm his rather dysfunctional team down. The other three quieted down as more and more civilians and shinobi gathered to the small cliff. The mind of a shadow genius slowly and strategically thought about what his father told him in secret, of one of his close friends, Naruto Uzumaki, was being appointed temporary Hokage, and if voted, the actual sixth Hokage. Naruto Uzumaki, Rakudame Hokage have a nice spin to it. Shikamaru smiled happily as he thought of what Joy Naruto was going through, to have his dreams, so suddenly and so quickly, he and Gara were probably the youngest cages of all time. He remembered the times his fellow classmates mocked Naruto for still being a genin, and now he made the spring to the most powerful position in all of Konoha. Unfortunately his strategic mind couldn't help but go over the negatives and the downs in his personality, the hows or ifs, in the conversation of Naruto. He was a very, very troublesome man. He sighed as his gaze was caught and fixated at the lone cloud in the shady sky. He was a very, very, very troublesome man. It's I, and now he was his leader. Damn, but a troublesome man or not, Shikamaru would risk his life for the blonde, he had done so much in return for his own safety and the safety for his loved ones, it would be enough for Shikamaru to do. As he thought more on the subject, an irritated Yamanaka looked at a silent Nara, deciding to have a little fun while the rest of the late sleepers joined for the ceremony, she gave a little finger jab to the temple. Why are you so quiet Shika Ino said as she poked the lazy shadow manipulator. Oh nothing he trailed off as his gaze followed the few morning clouds that so easily attracted his attention. Ino growled at the small attention span of the so-called genius, seriously what would it take for him to pay attention for goodness sake. While all this commotion was a Kroon Chaoji munched happily on his brand new barbeque potato chips, while he watched Ino talk down Shika, as he tried his best to ignore her. Well that would be hard for any normal human, he has years of experience from ignoring a far more annoying mother than this weaker version of his mum. Shika she said as she poked him in the temple. Poke, Shika. Poke, Shika. Poke, Shika. Tauji just sat back and laughed at the Shikamaru's expression changing to different shades of anger, and went all the way to murderous. Before the next poke could stab him in the temple, Chaoji finally put a halt to the little show they were playing. He could see the flag rising and several people emerging from the tents. The people around him slowly settled down, and as the sounds could be heard was the morning bird rising from their sleep, singing beautifully to the crowds that waited impatiently below. Ino still wanted a reaction from the lazy man though. Poke, dammit Ino, shut up Akamaru, the dog barked at his reply. No, you shut up, another barker reply in the Inuzuka clan. The rest of Kiba's team separated from the noisy dog boy, as he got into another argument over what species was better. It usually ended into a fist and paw fight between the two pups. Now usually Shino or Hinata would settle the issue down before it went too far, but unfortunately the other two would find themselves buried within their own thoughts. Usually Hinata would call Akamaru away, or Shino would distract Kiba with an interesting bug that would catch his attention. The Hayuga was in a particularly deep trance as she thought of her only love. Hinata's mind has been racing ever since she has been fully conscious, she remembered her confession, unfortunately it all goes black after that. Her face is still red with the thought. Shino has his collar even higher than usual, his shades were planted firmly on his face, hiding his eyes from anyone's view. Humans never like the ability to not see into a person's eyes, it is unnerving. And Shino was in league with Kakashi about how much he would reveal about himself, so it was hard enough to know what he was thinking. But deep down in the depths of the young manipulator's mind, the news his father had told to him in secret, an S-rank secret to be exact was, well, disturbing. It was a secret about the Yandame Hokage and one of his closest friends. Naruto Uzumaki. All while the commotion of waking up earlier and complaints from the younger generation were heard especially, the songs of birds and the concerned talks between friends, the outrageous fits between the shinobi teams. Sakura and Sai. Each talked to the other, idly chatting about nothing right now, neither expecting what dramatic change will happen, only expecting a new Hokage to announce their position. Hidden Hokage emerges for a small second. The arrangements went to the detail, first the twin advisors, both to the right side of the Hokage, symbolizing the Hokage's involvement with politics, then the Anbu captain and Jonin commander to the left, symbolizing the Hokage's military involvement and power overall in the village. Chikaku was the first to step up, the entire crowd was silent, except a loud groan from the Jonin commander's son. He sped through a small that allowed his voice to be heard far, for all to hear, he cleared his throat and quickly began a troublesome speech. We are here today he paused, to mourn the past and embrace the future he said finished with a small cough. I am here to present to you the man who will lead us through these dark times the tent doors parted as a figure dressed entirely in the ceremonial hokage robes. 
he approached the small wooden ledge and placed his hands firmly down as the crowd politely applauded their new leader. Naruto grinned as he nodded to his Jonin commander, Shikaku smirked as he continued. Your new Hokage he paused. Naruto's grin was set firmly as he awaited the reactions, he placed his hand on his Hokage hat, as he removed it, Shikaku finished his short speech. Naruto Uzumaki, the sixth Hokage, the very crowd was in shock, the hero of Konoha was now its leader, the elders were in deep thought as of the skills that Naruto would bring to the position, while the younger generation wouldn't give a heap, the younger members of the crowd began shouting and screaming for their newly appointed leader. The ninja applauded as the civilians went crazy with the new revelation, he was their leader, he had protected them from hell and more, who else could be any better for the position. The roar of the crowd seemed to never stop, the smiles, the whistles and cheers for Naruto was a bit overwhelming, as a small warm tear fell down his right eye, as it slowly made its way down his cheek. He never, ever thought this moment would happen, even after he was officially appointed Hokage, he really thought that Tsunade would awaken from her forced slumber, or the council would decide against him, or the daimyo would reconsider his decision, or, or, he didn't really know, but he knew that it was now officially his, his dream of making his speech to the loving villagers below, was now a reality, it was happening now and he couldn't be happier. The applause and cheering didn't seem to stop or slow down, as Naruto wiped his tears and raised his hand, indicating he was ready to speak. The crowd's cheers lowered and lowered to the silence, ignoring the few people yelling at the top of their lungs, we love you and such. He spoke to himself reading his wavering voice as it was weak with emotion and nervousness from public speaking, he was never one to speak to large crowds. Sigh, he was getting the attention he wanted as a child, so he should be sort of happy. He breathed steadily and slowly as he looked out at the countless heads staring directly at him, all wondering when he would begin. He counted down as this was soon applied to his voice, allowing all to hear him. Citizens and shinobi of Kanoha he paused as the cheering began again, he let out a happy sigh as he needed a small break, we have suffered he said as the cheering slowed down. We as a people have suffered he said, gaining small confidence at the looks of admiration from his listeners. We have suffered death and destruction on so m he paused again as he regained his breathing, not trying to get too ahead of himself. Death and destruction, whether it is from a war we wanted no part in, whether it is an invasion, whether it is from shinobi, akatsuki or demon he paused after saying demon. Seeing our homes burn, families die, it is a sight I never wished for my people, yet it is what makes us the people of Konoha strong he said, putting emphasis on the word strong. Would any other village survive three wars he shook his head as the cheering slowly clapped to the facts he brought up. Would any other village survive an attack from not one village, but two, and become the victor as the day ended he said as he shook his head again, ignoring the cheer as it slowly got louder and louder. Would any village survive against the might of Akatsuki and emerge as the victor he shook his head again as he waited for the masses below to calm. Would any village at all survive the might of the nine-tailed demon and not only survive, but prosper and become the great and strong village we were, that we are he paused, slightly happy that the ones who knew the truth didn't stop or lessen in their clapping. Yet for some unknown reason to every foreign village out there, after every attack, every invasion, we rebuild, we rebuild and leave the dark times behind us, and prosper he paused again, as the cheering roared again. We prosper he paused. We prosper as the dominant force of the shinobi lands he shouted over the very, very loud cheers from the young genin. We have suffered no one can deny it he said as he looked downwards as he had to finally reveal his secret. But as a village we will stand together, we will rebuild and prosper once again he said, finishing his speech to the masses below, as the roar of applause seemed to reach its climax, as the cheering never seemed to stop. Naruto smiled as he raised his hand, the crowd seemed to calm somewhat, and Naruto felt somewhat awkward with this unofficial control over the villagers. As being so young, I would understand that some of the older more experienced citizens of Konoha would be doubtful of my position he spoke carefully. The crowd went quiet as some of the younger members of the crowd had the nerve to even glare at their parents and grandparents for just making their hokage and hero doubt himself. But if you give me the opportunity just one chance, that's all I ask of he spoke carefully. And as the newly appointed hokage, I have already made my first law and I have disbanded one previous law he paused as he readied his announcement that would change not his village, but that of the other villages, Iwa, Kumo especially. The first was an S-rank secret hiding my father and mother's name from me all these years the silence was filled with innocent curiosity. I will announce my family's blood, the Yuzumaki clan and the Namakas clan unlike last time there was no applause, no cheers, but whispers, people tore their vision away from their leader and talked among themselves, whispering and talking, only taking small glances to see the large amount of similarities between the fourth and, now, the sixth. The color of the hair, the style and length, Naruto was shorter than his six two fathers, but he was still early in his years. The medium build and deep blue eyes that made the woman Gaga. The defined and lean body, the stone-cut muscles and small scars from past battles. 
the really only difference was the large whisker marks or birthmarks, or whatever that gave a feral foreign look that seemed outlandish and so masculine to most women. And to the few people that had the privilege to know both men close enough could see the similarities in their personalities, most silently berated themselves as it was so obvious now that the cloak was taken away from their eyes. Both were strong and resourceful on the punch, smart and strategic when needed. Balmanado was a fair bit smarter and calmer, while Naruto was a bit hot-headed and less smarter than his father, he more than made up with the few traits he picked up from his loving mother. Banado was a calm and collected man at all times, he was creative and imaginative, was a loyal man, to his friends and eventually woman, he was considered by most the most powerful of shinobi and loyal friend to all, and feared rival and enemy. He was not that physically strong or fast, but he used his wits and superior chakra control and creative jutsus to defeat his enemies. His supposed mother was the beautiful, hot-headed tomboy from Whirlpool, while most considered her a simple one-and-done woman on the long list of the infamous Yandane. But both of them saw something in one another, and one thing led to another as love was slowly formed in secret. Not much was known about Kishina, apart from a few small facts, green eyes, red hair, from a faraway land, a destroyed village and a killed clan. Naruto raised his left hand, and the gossip suddenly came to a stop, eyes all resting again on his sigh, he would never get used to this. My father is a good man, I love my father and my mother, but right now, my duty is to you, to the people, the people of this village he said as the crowd was still silent. But my people, these dark times are never to leave us as long as the threat known simply as Akatsuki he said as he paused as the crowd booed at the name of the accursed organization. He smiled at the reaction, gaining some sort of confidence he continued, I have been summoned to a meeting with the cages of the major villages, we will meet in neutral grounds and discuss our means to end the damned organization that has caused us, so much he paused at the word pain. While I will be away, my sensei Kakashi shall take my place as I will be away at the summit, Kakashi will organize the supplies and safety of border, and on my return, we will begin the reconstruction of our village he finished, as the crowd once again clapped and cheered for Naruto and the future of the village. As Naruto waved to the people one final time, he passed through the tent door, he saw a couch and ran for it before his knees gave out, he dived face first and gave out a sigh of relaxation. Before he could feel the sweet slumber approach, he called for an Anbu Niko. He called the first Anbu's name that came to mind, a woman with flowing dark purple hair and a cat Anbu mask and uniform. Yes, Okajama she said in her militarized tone. Zen for he thought of the calmest and safest bet. Nara, Shikamaru and who else would be useful in a way he could protect himself and show the strength of Konoha in times of weakness. Ayuga, Niji, that is all he said as he slowly and surely fell into a deep and happily welcomed nap, even if it was for a short while. Uzumaki the man whispered as he stared down at the genin photo. A surge of chakra made him look up at the plant like a figure bowing before him. Changes are going to be made he said as he calculated what changes were needed. Bring me Sasuke, his team, and he thought of the best candidate for the job he had prepared. Kissum, Naruto placed his Hokage hat on his back and turned to the many citizens and shinobi, waving goodbye to the beloved Hokage. Shikamaru just stared at the clouds with his hands in his pockets, while Niji used his Byakugan to scout ahead of where they were heading off to. Kakashi walked closer to the trio as Kakashi saluted to his superior. Be careful with yourself and think before you speak Kakashi said with a wide smirk. I will he said to his former sensei. And don't you abuse your powers too much Naruto said to his sensei as he thought of all the fun he could have. Especially with one green beast of Konoha. Watch over Tsunade and take care of yourself Naruto said as he signaled to his bodyguards to be ready. He waved one final goodbye to the good people of Konoha and left in a puff of smoke. The Kazuki age of Suna waited patiently for his fellow cage, he wished he could say the same for his siblings he really wished he could, sometimes he wondered what the previous homicidal version would do in these certain situations. God what's taking them so long Tamari screamed at no one as she couldn't stay still much longer. Since no one answered back she took her anger out on a large amount of trees as she made a powerful wind slice dot. While the destruction ceased, Gara just shook his head as he watched his beloved sister calm down somewhat as Kankuro just sneered at how much his sister could get away with. They are late as only brother said in an upset voice. Gara looked at the position of the sun and seeing as they had waited for over an hour, he knew his siblings would start to get irritated. By the time they get here we won't make that much ground before Dark Gara concluded. Kankuro was about to speak before he saw three figures and felt the large chakra sources come closer. Finally Tamari whispered as she approached her brother's left side and Kankuro to his right. Anzo watched from afar as the crowds cheered and waved goodbyes for their new leader. Anzo sneered as his final backup plan was destroyed right in front of his face, he hoped that the elders of the village would convince the younger against the decision of the council, it was far-fetched of course, but it was all he had left. But Naruto made a fatal flaw, which he was going to exploit to the fullest, he smirked as he signaled for his bodyguards. His two closest and strongest root members appeared bowing before him. 
You called for us Fu said in an emotionless voice. I have plans for you and Torin he said, believing if done properly, it could change everything. On the day the Hokage leaves, at midnight, we will begin an assassination plot against Tsunade he said. Gather ten of your fellow Root members, the strongest of them, all he said as he pulled out a set of headbands. But most importantly no bloodlines, we don't want anyone knowing we were involved at all he said as he threw seven Iowa headbands to the Root members. Place these on at my signal, and follow my plans to the T he said as he chuckled a small evil laugh. Good night Ow she said softly as she closed the door to her personal room, she sighed at the side of an empty bed and a cold room. She pulled her silk robe down as it slowly and gracefully slipped off her slender shoulders, as she slowly and sleepily made her way to bed the moonlight illuminated her skin, making her look like a goddess, as she closed into her comfortable bed. Her vision came across a small vanity mirror, she was now entering her late twenties, and she knew she would never say the true number that killed her a tiny bit whenever it was spoken. She could see the small signs that her age was showing, nothing like wrinkles or the sort, but, as her bare skin touched the cool sheets of her bed, she shivered in a sad way. Her mind thought of man's touch, a man's warmth, a simple word to her that would leave her stunned and unwilling to make her move away from him. The more she thought about her single woman woes, her bed suddenly got colder and colder. The feel two strong arms hold her in comfort and protect her with her without her wanting him to. To know that she wouldn't be alone anymore, to know she wouldn't be judged, wouldn't be objectified, wouldn't be looked down upon, but to be a person who was respected and loved. A small tear escaped her jade green eyes. She hoped her single life woes would end soon. If only she knew.